Yo, it's Simi Kanda. You're locked in to DJ Marky Marx. Let's go. So yes, Simi, thank you for coming on. Anytime. So how have you been? All right, how's things? I've been good, man. How about you? Great, like just, it's been mad. When was the last time I saw it? Was it, I think we are saying like in the way here, like well, waiting outside that like, was it that event like two years ago? Well, I met you two years ago. Yeah, and then yeah, I think yeah. last time I saw you was a that, that video, shoot. video shoot. So yeah, yeah. How's things been since then? Like It's been good. I just graduated and now I'm just freelancing, doing like a mixture of like everything. So I'm doing like fashion shoots, photography, a bit of videography, trying to get more into videography side of things. I um, work with brands, models and artists now as well. So Sick. yeah, it's been lit. I mean, like, what I was just saying before, like, every time I go on your page, it's, like... Yeah, crazy. Really, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, one time, like, you're doing, like... I think I saw, like, someone... They weren't wearing a kilt, but they were wearing, like... Yeah, um, the Scottish kind of vibe shoot. Yeah, I just did that um, with a, a local brand of mine um, that I'm working with constantly. Um, they've been really good and supportive, but, yeah. Dope. Big up, because I'm, I'm part of Scottish, so big up for that. Oh, so, yeah, so. that's nice. I, like, I, I love learning about different cultures and, like, getting, like, these other, like, projects on the side, so it's lit. Yeah. Awesome. So, like, how did you get into, like, the creative industry? Because I know you say, like, you're doing uni. Yeah. So when did you start, take like, picking up the camera and doing everything that you're doing? Like? Um, well, um, first, like, at my, like, high school, I did, like, drama and I did, like, media and I did art. And then, like, through there, I just felt like I'm, I'm always, like, wanting to be active and stuff. So, um, I first originally um, applied for, like, a fashion course, but I didn't get through. So then I was like, nah, I need to get into uni. So I was like, I'm going to do fashion and photography. So I got in, and then um, just through there, being, being at uni, I've just been doing a bit of both, like, magazine work, um, researching brands, designers getting more like in depth of the fashion industry and then obviously I did photography as, as well like I learned all my photography in uni so like in my uni I was like the underdog in uni because I was like fresh like I didn't know anything about cameras or anything like my, my side was more the fashion side and um, so that was a bit challenging itself but yeah I just worked hard and kept grinding and just <laughs> did it all myself I guess yeah I respect that because like I think nowadays you've got to be, do you feel like you have to do more than one thing to get anywhere? 100%. I feel like in the creative industry, you need to like know how to edit, like, cause I'm a photographer and I do fashion. So you need to have like good contacts. You like, you need to know makeup artists, studios, like creative directors, art directors. Like you need to know everyone. Cause like when you're doing these big shoots, like when you come out of uni, you'll realize like no one's there for you. You have to do it all yourself. So um, I'm blessed that like in my uni, like every year we have to do like a module where we work in the industry. So what I used to do is they used to like tell us to go to another fashion week. So every year I used to like do each season or try to do each season and like we got like magazines to work with. So that's how I got into like all the events, like shooting with like Vivian Westwood, like wow. um, Pam Hodge, a lot of big people. So um, yeah, it was sick. Mad. So I've just been grinding. <laughs> So what's that world like, like the whole fashion world? Because like, I can imagine it's very competitive and yeah. it's very brutal. Is that the, probably the right um, word? I think every creative industry is brutal and like just every industry in itself, like not just like the creative industry, like even like normal jobs. Like I think mm. everything is hard, but um, yeah. So like, how have you found the whole like creative process of like keeping up with trends and things like that? Because obviously like, it's forever changing and like social yeah. media is ever changing. So how do you like keep up with all the changes all the time? Like, um, well, with me, with my style, I don't really like following the trends cause like that doesn't interest me. Um, I just like to, cause I feel like I have a niche. Like I like do a lot of street style stuff. I like, I'm heavily inspired by like, the 90s fashion. Like I think you see a lot in my like style shoots. I do styling shoots with like baggy clothes, baggy hoodies, all that kind of vibe and like just mix like music inspiration with it as well because like I do like ins I'm inspired by like Tupac and Aaliyah and Biggie and like how they Big dress up. like so like I feel like a lot of people can see that in my styling work and that's the kind of people I um, collaborate with as well in my styling shoots and fashion shoots awesome but yeah 
like the whole, I think the whole nineties aesthetic at the moment is yeah. very popular. Like yeah. the whole, like you say, Leah Biggie thing is really like yeah. you know you get them t shirts and it's got like the graphics of them yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. It's so in at the moment, like it's crazy. Yeah, it is, and like I mean, like people do follow trends, but I feel like they always come and go and they always come back. Like flares are coming back in, like um, or like crop tops and stuff like that. Like everything's just coming back in, so it just all circles around. Yeah, have you designed any like clothes yourself, and is it more just picking outfits or? So I haven't designed any clothes yet. <laughs> right. Um, but like I have been working with design. Like when I was in Leeds Art University, like we had to like collaborate and work with the designers. So we've obviously looked at how they've come up with their collections and made their collections from scratch. Like look at their sketches and like all the way from the beginning. So I feel like being a photographer or like a creative like you all need to work together and see like the process behind things because there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know of or like appreciate so um yeah are you saying before like kind of off camera like how you know if you don't work with someone if they're bad vibes is there a lot of kind of like you have to be very careful like who you work with or is it more um well with me i'm like a very positive person so um I'm like a very like positive vibes kind of person so like I can tell like if the vibes off and I prefer not to work with anyone I don't get along with because you can just see it in the photos like if you don't get along with a model like they'll be stiff on camera or like you'll just see it and then you won't be able to use the images so I feel like it really plays a big part like when you're working with people like you need to get along with them and like you need to be like like either like link them up like a day before the shoot or like just do that and vibe with them. Hundred like, percent. I remember yeah. one time I did my first ever like I think it was my first ever photo shoot for myself. Yeah. And I just found How did that this, go? Uh, it looks easy, doesn't it? Like when you <laughs> yeah. see other people do it, it looks easy. When I actually did it, I thought it was so hard. Like it was right. so. I just felt so awkward. I don't oh. know why, because I'm quite a confident person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but talking, not in front of the camera sometimes. Yeah, I don't know what it was that I just felt like. And then the guy that was doing it, big up to him, he was just saying to me like like just relax Mark yeah. and, you know take your time with it just have fun with it because like I think that's the thing like it do you feel like there's a big focus on like image because of social media now do you feel like there's a big emphasis on like how people look and images obviously image is very important yeah. to people do you feel like that that's quite a big thing well, at the moment I feel like everyone's different like with you you're saying like you have like probably like camera shy but like not everyone likes taking photos and not everyone's used to it like I've worked with models that I've never done modeling before so I've had to like teach them how to pose like teach them what their favorite side is like you have to work with the people so I feel like it's different for everyone I can imagine yeah yeah like, I bet you've had so many mad, like, lo like how would you go about picking locations? Because... Oh, yo, I just improvise that, you know? Really? Like, I was in a shoot in Birmingham the other day. I did not know what I was doing. I had to improvise that all. <laughs> just, like, go over there. Get, just, like, yeah, go. I just feel like the when you improvise, like, street style streets is the best because, like, you find some next level areas and you can just pin them sometimes when you're, like, walking around or you see somewhere. I just pin areas I want to shoot at. And that's how I do it. But I mainly prefer, like when it's like a studio shoot because like you can choose like your backdrops you can be hella creative but like outside shoot is always hard <laughs> yeah I, have you had any like funny moments where like something's gone like massively wrong or like yeah like... well um the other day my studio cancelled on me oh, so mad. i had to like last minute get another <laughs> one like but like everyone thinks that like shoots go like all calm they don't like something will always go wrong like always like a, a makeup artist might be late or a model might be late or a model might cancel on you so you just have to like always like prepare yourself and have backups and I feel like in the creative industry you always need backups like that's the main thing you need 100% like I think I learned quickly when I was doing radio that like if a guest doesn't turn up make sure you've got yeah. loads of music to play because like yeah. I've done events where like a DJ's cancelled or oh shit I had one time where I had an event where <laughs> this female DJ that I booked and she turned up and she was like drunk. Oh. She, I'm not going to say her name, but like, <laughs> I, I can't get over it. Like she just turned up drunk and I was like, are, we, are you going to do this or not? And she's just like, all right, F you. And she just left. Like, I didn't say that to her, but like my <laughs> sound guy was like, yeah, whatever, leave. Because if you're not, she wasn't up for doing it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You can't force anyone in it. Like, fair uh, enough. <laughs> that, that would have yeah. been mad. Yeah. But like it was, she was meant to do like a full on set and then she turned up like, drunk and it was like bro really like mm. we've been waiting for you for like half like an hour to Jeez. hour and a half and like you like you wrote like you're turning up drunk it's like no that's that's no respect though like 
that's a bit bad isn't it it was a bit peak <laughs> So we were talking about this before, like the whole sort of creativeness up here. Mm-hmm. Like I've only been in it for a short while, like five years. And it's, I mean, it's a very short amount of time. So like... Yeah, yeah same with me. I've only been in this creative industry for like three, four years. Mad. Yeah. <laughs> but we were saying like how it's it's a bit of like a wild west, especially when it comes to like the money side, because mm-hmm. everyone's happy until like money comes up that's the one thing that yeah. where it gets a bit like so how have you found it because like there's not really i've experienced this as like doing a you know my dj stuff my other stuff like i've experienced that like there's not really set rules is there so like mm. when it comes to money especially so how have you found like i'm not going to ask like your practices but like yeah, how have yeah. you found that process of like booking people is it mm-hmm. quite you know, have you ever had anyone that's like messed you about or anything like that? Oh, all the time. Like people mess you around in this industry all the time, but I feel like you just need to stick to your boundaries and like, um, even with like friends and family, like just keep it like business because you can't mix business and family. Like that's something I've learned. And um, with paid shoots, like, um, like I don't mind collaborating with people, but because I've been in this industry for time, I feel like I know my worth. So like, I like people do pay me for shoots. So like, if I was to collaborate with someone for free, like I'd make sure it'll benefit me and then, and it'll benefit them as well. Hmm. So I wouldn't do free work. I know I've said it, but yeah, I wouldn't yeah. do free work <laughs> unless it'll benefit me because I feel like I've done a lot of work now and like, I know my shit. So like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose it's kind of like, I'll do it for you, but what can you give me in return? Yeah. Like, kind of thing. I yeah, guess. that's such a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like, been yeah. in the industry, I've been in this industry for that long. Like, I feel like I know what I'm doing. So, like, people do book me for my work and my time because it does take a lot of time. Like, people oh, yeah. don't understand, like, after a shoot, like, I'm not just done. Like, I've got to edit, I've got to sort other stuff out. And, like, it's just, it's very time consuming. So, yeah. people need to appreciate that side of things as well. Yeah, I get and, like, that. And, like, planning before the shoot, that takes weeks, months. Like, I've had shoots planned for like months and then on the actual day it'll all go wrong and we can reschedule like there's a lot of things like people don't know about this industry so mm. yeah like the paid side stuff but yeah it, I, I, I hear that and I feel that because like people probably just look at me as like a DJ presenter and like I'm just some guy that plays music but like I'm not like I've got to turn up I've got to get up I've got to go to bed yeah. early night before I've got to bring all my stuff if I'm doing an event yeah. I've got to bring like my memory stick I've got to bring in some cases I've got to bring like my decks or whatever mm-hmm. and I can imagine with you it's like you've got to get up in the morning you've got to yeah. drive there's your petrol you've got to charge my camera yeah. up your make makeup, sure my memory card yeah, yeah. well, make, well, sometimes go with no makeup forget that shit can't yeah. be out. I'm <laughs> like yeah, out, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just out I'm like I won't have time <laughs> do you know what I mean fuck that shit yeah yeah sometimes I just with my makeup you know I just <laughs> <laughs> natural yeah. beauty you got this <laughs> You know, my eyebrows, like, you know the amount of girls that come up to me and they're like, oh, I want to do your eyebrows because they're oh just... Oh my God, you should do them. They're so thick. Nah, but you should do, like, boys, like, do wear makeup as well. People need to know that. Let's make no it happen. grooming. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, so, like, I mean, like, going back to the whole... Because, like, when you were doing that shoot the other day and you had them lads and they looked like the Peaky Blinders. Yeah. How was that? Cause, like, that was amazing. Like, I did do a shoot with my brother, like, in my first year of uni, like, Peaky Blinders inspired. Because I love that si- side of, like, fashion as well, like, the smart wear. Um, and mixing it up with, like, the locations. That was actually a really good shoot, actually, yeah. Um, nice. I'm trying to bring more models on my team. So, like, I'm working with, like, new faces because I feel like it's best to bring new people up in the scenes um but yeah that shoot was amazing yeah can I imagine yeah it's good that you got like because like I was saying this before like there's some photographers and you go on the page and it's just like kind of one thing but you're thinking a bit more like being a bit more like well-rounded you're doing yeah. like artists you're doing a bit of everything aren't you so yeah I mean I, I'm a I cast myself as a creative because I do a bit of everything um but that shoot I loved it because I just loved the peak of liners like kind of aesthetic and stuff and um when I did that shoot I just loved it um the clients I had was like mainly like um Mark Darcy and Cavani so like um, they're like two big uh, suit brands um, in the UK so I just collaborated with them both with Yorkshire Menswear so shout out to them um, they've been so nice and like um, yeah they were really good clients to have awesome how was the uh, the recent one with Graft because he would literally just won the rap game yeah so, was that before or was that just after what he'd won um, so that was when did I miss Graft about that now, I've been mates with Graft for uh, 
since that when we met when we were all met at that oh, event yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. so um yeah i've been mates with him since then and i was like yo let's work on something and then when he i didn't know he was on the rap game but then when i found out i was like after the rap game i was like yo let's work on something and then yeah it just happened from there like i just messaged him and then we bounced off ideas from each other and then we both wanted to like capture like leads for his single album cover that I did for him. Uh, I did his cover cover shoot with him. Did you see? Yeah. If it's that the one that you're on about, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, yeah, one, the yeah. Hustle and Dream. Yeah, yeah. So it was at the stadium, wasn't it, that one? Yeah, yeah so we yeah. shot outside Leeds um, United Stadium, yeah. So we had like a, a clear concept and then we just um, we just shot it and then we just vibed, man. Awesome. Yeah, it was lit. <laughs> I suppose that was such a mad time because he just won the rap game and obviously yeah. you're involved in that as well. So how yeah. did that feel like? Yeah, uh, it was it was good, man. I was a bit shocked that he like um, he wanted to work with me, but like it was lit. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So how like how would you how would you feel about like you know other photographers? Obviously, I know that you said that you support a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But do you feel like it's competitive in some aspects, or is it um, more of just like because well, not like, like based in Leeds are like. Uh, I'd say just like up round like yeah north and like Leeds and um well I, I I do like I know a lot of photographers and video videographers in Leeds and I do fully support them so like um it, obviously every industry is competitive but like I'm just very supportive of everyone like so I don't really see it as competition because everyone's in their mm. own lane and like you're just doing your own thing that's how I've always seen it so yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah, I mean, like, have you, have you got a lot of, like, up-and-coming artists messaging them? Because obviously, yeah. like, there's a high demand for, like, you know, video shoots and rap shoots, you know, yeah. photo shoots for rappers and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah, so, like, um, I have been working with a few artists that are soon coming up, you'll see on my Instagram, but I've been hella slow on socials because <laughs> I've been working hard, um, like, doing, like, press release shots for artists. That's what I'm trying to do more of and, like, doing kind of like behind the scenes with like artists as well in the shoots so yeah just trying to tap in everywhere to be honest <laughs> awesome yeah because that bts thing that's become such a massive thing of the promotion now hasn't yeah. it like because i remember 100%. when that started there's only a couple of people that were doing it and then it's become mm -hmm. it's almost become like i wouldn't say compulsory but people kind of expect it now don't they like when there's yeah. a big music video you want to see the process behind it like i think it's nice to like see what happens at a photo shoot like people always like want to know like what happens but mm. yeah i think it's good to like capture behind the scenes of everything to be honest 100%. like even on photo shoots like i get i always get like an assistant or someone to do like behind the scenes for me when i'm doing my fashion shoots as well because it's just nice to see the process 100%. of how someone works because that one with chris blaze we we, we were at that yeah, was a good vibe yeah. that was funny that was sick that was a long day. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. I, I was there from early, and then I interviewed a few people. I just want to say rest in peace to Nats as well, because yeah. it's very sad. But like, it's that that day was just literally like it was, because like I think Chris he rang me right. He rang me. He was like in American accent. He was like, "Yo, Marky, come <laughs> come to this. We're doing this shoot. This was literally him. like a couple hours before." Oh, and, he was, bless and I was him. like. I was like, go on then, I'll do some interviews and stuff. And obviously, because like, I, I rate him, so. Yeah. And it was, you know what, it was worth it. And it, I think that I met some cool contacts. Like I met yeah. some models, I met some more photographers. I met, uh, what's his name? Is it Captive Visuals? David? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, David, he's sick. I rate him. He's sick, man. Bless him. So it's always worth going to stuff, because like, do you feel like the power of networking in person is important? Yeah, like, um, when I was at uni, like, um, they always used to tell us to network, network, network. So I was basically networking for three years, like in the fashion scenes. And then from there, like, I kind of found myself more working with artists because I have a lot of artist friends. So like, I've got a mixture of networking from the music scenes and the fashion scene. So it's kind of good because everything links. So I'm kind of blessed that I, I went to like all these events and I feel like you need to go to these events to show your face as well, because at the end of the day, like people want to see you. So, and mm. then your work comes as well. Do you know what I mean? hundred percent. I think like, I get that because I think sometimes like we put so much emphasis on social media and like, I think when people meet me, no, people see me on Instagram and they meet me in person. And then I think sometimes people like can sometimes be surprised because I meet people. So like you see people on Instagram mm -hmm. and when you meet them in person, they're a completely different person. Oh, really? And I feel that's happened to me a couple of times where people 
think I'm a lot different to how I am on socials. I think it's, it all depends yeah. on like how you present yourself, I guess. But a hundred percent, like some photographers don't even show their face on their Instagram, like at all. So like when you meet them, you're like, whoa, who the hell are you? Like, are you Mad. actually this person? <laughs> like yeah. the other day, like, I had like a BTS photographer on my set with an artist and I was like I couldn't even recognise like, are you this person and I was like yo I looked at his bag I was like yeah there's probably a camera there and I was like yo okay I'm gonna walk up to him like slightly like yo, yeah you that kind of... it's just mad you know like some photographers mm. don't show their face or like some queers just don't show their face at all um, so you gotta be careful 100% <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it's, it is crazy. I think that's happened with me with artists where, like, people come up to me and I don't initially... No, it happens It happens in radio because radio, like, in the radio world, you don't actually, like, see half the presenters because you go and you do your show yeah. and then the presenter comes and does their show, like, an hour after you've left. Oh, okay. So you can hear them on radio, but you don't always see them in person. There's quite a lot of that going on, so... Oh, okay. It's crazy. It's so, mad. So I know you mentioned earlier about, like, 90s influence, like... yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Is it, is it more like old school or you're into like, you kind of like more? Um, I listen to pretty much everything, not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I do listen to a lot of Tupac, Aaliyah. Um, I, I just listen to everyone, to be honest. I support like my um, friends as well a lot, so I, I listen to their songs as well. Um, like Harris and Mead. Um, yeah, just um, a lot of people. I can't think on top of my head. Like so many people and I can't think of anyone. <laughs> But yeah, like I feel like just um, listening to every genre is the best because, like, you get you get to hear different voices and it's nice to hear different voices. Hundred percent. I think recently I've been listening to a lot of Radio One. I don't know why, just because <laughs> I feel like One Extra. I, I rate One Extra so much, but I feel like when I go on there, there's quite a lot of the same songs being played. So yeah. Sometimes I like to like switch it to Radio One just because there's more of like a diverse selection of music I'd say there's kind of right. more genres but I do rate Radio 1 though like I probably love like Yasmin Evans she's sick and there's so many other presenters that I rate which is just so so sick so yeah. like obviously like your heritage is Asian so how does yeah. that do you put that a lot of that into like your work then would you say like um, yeah like my personal work like I always like go back to like my culture and like try and um, work with more people like myself um, like I did a recent shoot in London with a, um, a designer, upcoming designer. She's so hard. I like really wanted to shoot with her because I loved her collection. Like she had like um, a lot of inspired like with her layering in the clothes, like the Indian kind of clothes. So uh, we started that shoot out and it like it smashed. I, I think it smashed it on the on the socials. Everyone loved it. Like I did a shoot in Southall with like all the collection with like four amazing models that um, I know. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah definitely put my culture in my work all the time i try to <laughs> yeah it's needed it's needed definitely yeah. so do you feel like that like obviously being like a female as well do you think sometimes in the creative industry would you say there's like a lot of sexism would you say or is, have you found it um, quite okay so far if you don't want me asking um yeah i do find it is a bit sexist not gonna lie but that's like when i was doing my london fashion week kind of stuff see, like yeah. when i was doing like just photography like working in the cockpit or like backstage with like the designers like getting the shots or like just street style shots because i started off doing a lot of street style stuff in london fashion week and then magazines i worked with magazines like identity noctis um, for a lot of like magazines like that and then they approached me to work with them and then that was for uni as well so um, yeah yeah I can imagine it's like that in the music industry it's very like male dominate is that the right yeah, word yeah yeah if that's the right word yeah, yeah like most of the photographers when I was like working at London Fashion Week was male and I was like the only like girl that I was like yay I love hey. my life <laughs> yeah. I love it <laughs> <laughs> That's but great. yeah, no, I, I don't feel like it should step anyone back. Like, I feel like if you want to do something, you should just do it. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. Like, just do it, man. Like, 100%, life's yeah. too short. Like, honestly, it's too short. So if you want to be a makeup artist, don't do it, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, just do it. So, like, how have you how have you found, like, the environment in Leeds, like, the creative industry? Like, I know we talked about, like, the sort of the business side of it, but, like, how are the people like? What are the what are the clients being like in Leeds? Is it generally being like good vibes? Or yeah, like... well, the people I've worked with have all been good vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, because yeah. I don't work with anyone that gives me bad vibes. Like first impression means a lot to me. So, mm. um, 
yeah, I think it's, Leeds is really good. Like, I, that's what I think. But um, I feel like we just all need to support each other more because I'm from Leeds as well. So I'm always supporting, as I've said before. Yeah, definitely. So, like, definitely everyone just keep supporting each other because, you know, you never know where everyone's going to go. So, definitely. yeah. Definitely. What's your one, like, favourite thing about... What's, like, your one favourite thing and your one least favourite thing about being a creative? Um. Okay, my... F- my favourite thing is like meeting new people. Like I love meeting new people. And then my least favourite thing in the creative industry um, is probably like people wasting your time. Like that's one thing I hate. Like if someone's wasting my time, like nah, <laughs> I <don't Yeah>. won't. <laughs> like bye. <laughs> It happens. Yeah. Well, I was saying, telling Andre that like, one time, I, a few years ago, I had some guy, I'm not going to say who because I don't like doing that, but like <laughs> some guy slept in. So I had a radio interview. <gasps> and like this is, well, to be fair, it was a Sunday morning. Like I get it. Sunday's a lazy day, but like. <laughs> Sunday today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> still <laughs> like. bed <laughs> early. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he slept all the way through like, for an interview. <gasps> Seriously. And just didn't no, hear that's anything. Peak. Like, like I've had I've had people like not turn up. I've had people being late, etc. But I've never had any. Like that was the first time anyone's ever slept through. It was crazy. Didn't you do you like? Did he know that he had like the interview with you? Or yeah, I think I think to be fair, I think someone else turned up, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, that's yeah. Right then. Yeah. But it's, it, you got to work around it, and it like you just mm-hmm. got to adapt and keep going. I guess. Yeah, hundred like, percent. I yeah. always improvise. Like it's the best thing to do. Hundred percent. Best skill to have to improvise. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Have you ever had like a moment where like the cameras stop working like during a shoot or like something's like blown up? Not blown up, but like yeah. broken. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Then I'm on yeah. the internet. Like, why is my lens not working? Like, oh, you need to switch your phone off or like I need to take the lens off, put it back on. Like, oh, is that yeah. was simple. <laughs> but I've heard stories of where like people have done video shoots or video shoots like for. Yeah. Music videos and they've watched it back and like there's been like a smudge on the lens or something oh, else has happened shit. i can imagine that happens a lot where like, there's a what's it a bad final product and stuff like that that's um, quite a common thing yeah like in that case if if the videographer and whoever's on the shoot or whoever did it like they'd probably just reschedule it or like redo it all like yeah. i don't know like or sometimes they might just adapt and like edit it like hella good to like get rid of it but that'll take time, so I feel like you just all have to adapt to the situation and just try and sort it out with your client. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Just kind of like a one final question is like, what would you say to someone that's, you know, maybe someone that's from like your background, your heritage, mm-hmm. or someone that's upcoming as a photographer, what would your advice to them like be? Like if you could tell yourself, you know, something now when, like if you could go back in time and tell yourself something when you started, what would you say to them? Like, um, Take my wrists legit just take my risks and like don't listen to anyone if if someone tells you no like don't listen to them just do it 100%. like because at the end of the day it's your life it's like you you got to do what you want to do and mm. that what makes you happy as well like there's no point being in the industry or like having a job and you're not happy like that's you're just gonna waste your life there's no point doing something if you're not happy so yeah that's what my advice would be 100 <laughs> percent so if people want to get at you, Simi, and find all your work, where can they do that? And, like, um, they can find me on Instagram at Simi and um, yeah, I'm open to work with anyone. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. Anytime. Out. Thank you, Mark, for all of this, man. I appreciate your work and appreciate your time. You too. I, you know what? I just like <laughs> want to big up, big up for the support as well because like oh, you're always time. showing me love online. So like it means nah, a lot. Honestly, man, you're my G. So it's calm, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. <laughs>